مساء الخير جميعا بشكر حضراتكم على الدعوه الكريمه دكتور ياسر ودكتور هشام وطبعا انا بقى مش غريب على بني سويف انا فموست اوف ذا فيسز هير ار فاميليار واي هوب اي ام فاميليار تو فانا هكلم حضراتكم عن اتريال فيبريليشن ريذم فيرسس ريت كنترول فكويك انتروداكشن Atrial fibrillation is independently associated with twofold increase في ال overall mortality uh, تحديدا in women uh, and a, a little bit less in men. Minority of these deaths are related to stroke while sudden cardiac deaths and deaths from progressive heart failure are more frequent. Atrial fibrillation particularly in patients with structural heart disease namely heart failure is a complex issue. In this presentation, I will quickly cover few points. أول حاجة, the rate versus rhythm control dogma. وبتاني حاجة, challenging this dogma in the general population, in patients with heart failure, and in patients with recent atrial fibrillation. وبعدين, practical points related to rate control in clinical practice, or rhythm control in clinical practice. So, أول حاجة, the rate versus rhythm control dogma. الدوجما دي هي ان ريت does not differ in uh, versus rhythm control in patients with uh, atrial fibrillation except for symptomatology. فالسيمتومز بس هي اللي بتفرق الريتم كنترول عن الريت كنترول. انما هارد اند بوينتس زي مورتاليتي وريدكشن اوف ميجر ادفيرس كارديك ايفنتس they are all the same. والدوجما دي اوريجينيتد من ستادي مهمه. اسمها الـ Affirm Study. الـ Affirm Study دي randomized حوالي 4,000 patient. It was back in, I believe, 2002. These patients were randomized to rhythm control using anti-arrhythmic drugs versus rate control. Well, the result can it disappointing. So the aim was is that rhythm control should be better than rate control. إنما ما كانش ده الوضع. كان الوضع إني الـ Composite endpoint, the layer can it measure adverse cardiac events, which turned it on death, with stroke, with major bleed, with cardiac arrest. Can it the same between two the two arms? The problem is that the firm study that driven the dogma until now has many limitations. The most important is rhythm control methods was drugs. There was no role for atrial fibrillation ablation. لأنها كانت في مهدها. طيب drugs دي were neither effective nor safe. A lot of these drugs had side effects and they were not able to maintain patients in normal sinus rhythm. Actually, they maintained sinus patients in sinus rhythm only in 60% of patients. الغريب كمان إن the way this study was designed is that patients who were maintained in sinus rhythm need not take anticoagulation. But obviously this would increase the risk of stroke in the rhythm control arm and could have affected this results. الخلاصة ان احنا انتهى بينا الامر لدوجما الدوجما دي مكملة معانا الى وقتنا هذا وهي ان ال rate control مش فارق عن ال rhythm control except for symptom reduction for rhythm control. طيب this dogma has been challenged recently with several important studies. واحدة منهم In the general population, AF patients in general, we did get some help. Cabana study. Cabana study was published in JAMA in 2019. Well, Cabana study randomized more than 2,000 patients into two arms, ablation arm. Well, ablation arm here, you muscle rhythm control strategy versus drug therapy. With drug therapy, that can left to the physician discretion. Can be between. Rhythm control for بعض المرضى و rate control for بعض المرضى. معظم العينين كانوا عندهم يا إما persistent atrial fibrillation يا إما paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. والعينين دول اتبعوا لمدة تقريبا أربع سنين. Unfortunately, the results was disappointing once more. There was no difference in the mace between both arms, rhythm control and rate control. وبالتالي the dogma of the affirm study could not Been changed, and in the general population, 
all what rhythm control strategies could offer is a better uh, symptom control. طبعا again في limitations على الكبانة study على الرغم من كونها بتستخدم a technique that is improving and uh, the highest success rate even more than medications انما ال intention to treat analysis اللي based عليه ال analysis ده can limited by a lot of crossover between the two arms. So perhaps we are missing something that is not demonstrated yet. But what about specific populations? The dogma of AF was challenged in the heart failure population by a study important. It is called the Kessel AF study. The Kessel AF study was initially published in 2017. This study had about 400 patients. 400 patients were with heart failure. They had heart failure. With an ejection fraction that is less than 35, the can inclusion criteria. Well, NYH A class can two, three, or four. Well, I need can and don't paroxysmal or persistent atrial fibrillation. They were randomized to two arms ablation as a strong rhythm control strategy versus conventional therapy, which is again was either rhythm or rate control based on the physician discretion. Well, study D busted a hard end point. Mortality and worsening heart failure. Well, the first time the rhythm control strategy, you worry improvement over the rate control strategy in this patient population. There was reduction in mass in the arm that used the rhythm control, namely ablation therapy. We can be driven by hospitalization rather than mortality. The hospitalization of these patients were reduced, and thus the primary endpoint of major adverse cardiac events were was reduced as well. And the authors of this publication concluded that atrial fibrillation rhythm control in patients with heart failure using a catheter ablation procedure was associated with significantly lower rate of composite endpoints of death and hospitalization over medical treatment, which was mainly a rate control strategy. Another group of patients in which the dogma was challenged is the patients who had recent atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation in the first year. And that was in the East AF Net 4 study. In the study D, Shafet Marda, Kano, high risk. So the Shedsvask score was three or more. And they had recent onset AF. Recent onset, by definition, according to this study, was less than one year. Well, Marda Dole, El Ta'liban, Kanu Qarabit Al Talat Talaf Marin, Kanu randomized the two arms. The two arms Dole, who are early rhythm control, Yan El Marid can get gab with Amelu DC cardioversion, where Emma Yemshi Al medical treatment to maintain sinus rhythm, Yan Emma Yit Amelu catheter ablation. Versus the usual care, which was mostly a rate control strategy. With both the cardiovascular death with stroke or hospitalization over the study duration. And this study was promising as well. So the cumulative incidence of the composite endpoint was less in the early rhythm control group. So we have two subpopulations of atrial fibrillation patients whom we benefit from a rhythm control strategy, namely patients with heart failure and patients with recent onset atrial fibrillation. So this was the conclusion of this study. Rhythm control early on in the course of the disease might be better than conventional therapy. What about rate control in clinical practice? What, what, what do we do? So rate control is a preferred therapy in your daily practice for a patient who is elderly, who is minimally symptomatic, who has recurrent atrial fibrillation. So you previously tried once and twice to restore cardiac, uh, normal rhythm, but it keeps coming back. Or if the previous antiarrhythmic drug failed, so he keeps getting EF, or if it's unlikely to maintain him in sinus rhythm, for example, if he has an enlarged left atrium. So these are the patients who would benefit from a rate control strategy. A here rate control strategies, here medications will assess 
And if the medications failed to control atrial fibrillation rate, you might resort to AV node ablation and implantation of a CRT device. Obviously, you don't want to implant a single chamber device because RV only pacing may have deleterious effects on the LV function. طيب ايه هي الميديكيشنز دي؟ الميديكيشنز دي هي اليوجوال ميديكيشنز بيتا بلوكرز، كالسيوم شانل بلوكرز، داجوكسن، اميودارون، اندرونيدارون. فيو تريبس اند تريكس، سو افويد كارفيديلول بيكوز اتس ليس افكتيف از ان اي في نودال بلوكينج ايجنتس. دونت يوز كالسيوم شانل بلوكرز ان بيشنتس ويز هارت فيلير. دونت يوز داجوكسن از ذا سول ايجنت، بارتيكيولرلي ان بيشنتس ويز نورمال ليفت فينتريكولار فانكشن. If you have to use amiodarone, use it only for refractory cases. Don't use it for every case. Use it only when you have to, like there is no alternative, like in patient with heart failure. If you use dorinidarone, take care that it's contraindicated in heart failure because it's, it increases mortality and it's less effective for rate control than amiodarone. So this is the flow chart. If you have a patient with atrial fibrillation, What dictates the type of therapy that you use? Oh, well, comorbidities. If the patient has structure and normal heart, you can use all the medications. But if the patient has left, have left ventricular dysfunction, you cannot use verapamil. You cannot use calcium channel blocker. Amiodarone will remain to be the last line of treatment if all other rate control medication fails. So to what extent should we rate control? السؤال ده اتجاوب من الاستدي اللي اسمها rate race two study. الاستدي دي كانت بتشوف احنا هنعمل strict rate control with definition can a resting heart rate less than 80 will moderate exercise heart rate less than 110 ولا هنعمل lenient rate control اللي هو resting and moderate exercise could be up to 110. Well, lenient rate control was non inferior to the strict rate control in, control in uh, achieving the primary endpoint, the candid composite endpoint of multiple adverse cardiac events. So you can control atrial fibrillation to a sort of soft heart rate, but you need to be cautious if your patients start developing left ventricular dysfunction. You may try to make strict rate control if the left ventricular function start to be impaired. So what about rhythm control in clinical practice? Rhythm control could be either antiarrhythmic drugs or can be atrial fibrillation ablation. Rhythm control is the preferred mode of therapy if it's the first episode or if the patient is highly symptomatic despite rate control. Of, or if it precipitated heart failure, or if the patient is young to avoid the remodeling of the atrium and the notion of atrial fibrillations begetting atrial fibrillations. So these are the strategies for rhythm control. What dictates the type of the medication that you will use is the absence of structural heart disease or its presence. So if there is no structural heart disease, you can use the full list So dofetilide, which is not available now in this country, dronidarone, flicanide, propafenone, or sutalone. And you can always resort to amiodarone if it's the last choice or catheter ablation. But if you have structural heart disease, that is namely heart failure, you cannot use class 1C antiarrhythmic drugs, flicanide or propafenone. And if you have coronary artery disease, you cannot use this group as well as the drone derun as well. And you can always resort to um, amiodarone as a last step. I think we have said it uh, vice versa. So for patients with heart failure, you cannot use drone derun. What about atrial fibrillation? What is, it, what, what is it, its role in the current guidelines? So this is the European Society of Cardiology guidelines, the latest published in 2020 and it recommends atrial fibrillation ablation to reverse atrial left ventricular dysfunction in patients with tachymyopathy as a class one indication. And it should be considered in selected atrial fibrillation patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction 
to improve survival and reduce hospitalization based on the Kessel AF study. So this is the current status um, in terms of AF ablation. My take home messages are <laughs> rhythm control over rate control remains to be only better symptom relief. There is growing evidence that praises the role of rhythm control strategies in the heart failure population and in patients with early onset atrial fibrillation, namely less than one year. Therapy should be tailored for each individual patient according to the age, preference, comorbidities, and most importantly, symptomatology. And that's it, thank you so much. Thank you.